Okay, so you're Nick Bohr and you started Hungry Boiler, so can you tell me a little bit about your business? Yeah, absolutely. So Hungry Boiler is a consolidated all-inclusive menu guide that lists over 300 menus in the Lafayette and West Lafayette area. Uh, we show those menus in real time so that you can turn to the website and get an accurate picture of what's going on and what your available options are right then at that exact minute. Uh, we also list specials and we have our own online ordering system that allows you to save money because those specials aren't advertised anywhere else. So, um, how did you decide that your business plan was more than an idea and that it should be executed? Uh, well, we just saw a huge need for it. You know, there was nothing out there that could, you know, so many people come into West Lafayette and Lafayette and they're from out of town, so they have no idea what's really available. And on top of that, there are so many great restaurants that we feel like everyone should want to go try. So. We're kind of foodies, my partner and I, uh, you know, we love going out to eat and we love trying different things, so it just kind of made sense and the timing added up and luckily we were able to bring it to West Lafayette. Do you actually like, write a business plan or a feasibility analysis for that? Oh yeah, absolutely, and I think that was like one of the biggest learning experiences coming into the business and I totally recommend that for any new entrepreneur. Um, a lot of times it's easy to get excited when you're having a conversation with your friends, kind of in a think tank or whatever, ideas start kind of popping up out all over the place. So um, when you write your thoughts on paper, it helps you kind of refine things and lets you kind of hear or see what's been what's been bounced around. Uh, from there, you can you can you can analyze it from a different perspective, I think, and be a little more conservative or a little more realistic when you see it on paper and you. Um, you know, just it's just a different medium. So I would totally be a fan of that. Uh, when I wrote my business plan, it was like 50 pages long. It took me over a month. Um, but the thing is, it's a living document. It's a it's never finished. So when you write a business plan, it's definitely something you should keep and update as you grow the business and, and add new revenue streams and add new parts to your model. That's great advice. Did you uh, do a financial correction at all? Or? Yeah, absolutely. And that was really hard just because it's such a new industry. You know, what we were trying to do hasn't been done. Um, in that many locations and it's not been done you know, at any point in the past. So we put together estimations with the idea that they were just estimations and we were extremely conservative with every one of them because our thoughts were, you know, if we exceed our goals, then hopefully you know, that'll, that will propel our business to the next level. All right, so how did you originally fund your business? Uh, well, after I wrote my business plan that I just mentioned, we started shopping it around to pretty much everyone in our close personal network. I had buddies, dads who ran a hedge fund, so we went there first, um, talked to them, and they initially were really interested in the idea, and there was a couple of things that, um, you know, in the very beginning, I was trying to sell people on an idea that wasn't tangible. There was no website up, there was nothing that they could go see uh, and feel, so that's a really, that's a high risk venture for sure. Uh, from there, we were eventually able to find somebody after about six months. It, definitely an angel investor, somebody from our close network that was just willing to give us the money and more so take a gamble on uh, myself and my future and my willingness to make sure that I was able to return their investment. Okay, so now if you want, if you were going to start all over again, what would you do differently? It's such a hard thing, you know, only being in our fourth semester, this is our second year in business, <clears throat> I think that that question could better be answered five years from now just yeah. because this really is the initial phase that you're watching, right? I would have just ordered more marketing materials because mm -hmm. we went through them so quickly in the mm -hmm. first year, we passed out all of our t-shirts and we went through all of our postcards and there was like a two week period where I literally had nothing left to hand out. So mm -hmm. like, we were just running back and forth to Kinko's and getting like colored flyers printed up and right. um, but you know, at the end of the day, that's not really a bad thing either. You know, we just our distribution model worked to its fullest extent, yeah. and we were we just blew through all of our promos. Now, to attract students and um, other people who are very interested in this, what is your main goal? How do you do it? Yeah, well, our goal is just to be a part of the culture here at mm -hmm. West Lafayette and part of the community and be involved uh, with campus events as much as possible. And mm -hmm. as you can see, I'm wearing my I Heart Food and Boob shirt. Mm -hmm. This really represents uh, one of the biggest things that we've done that have really propelled us to the successful level that we're at. Um, this shirt symbolizes our sponsorship for Big Man on Campus, which mm -hmm. is a tremendous philanthropy that's put on every year to benefit breast cancer awareness. So uh, one of the things that we did both years was donate percentages of every order for a week back to their organization Mm -hmm. as uh, one of their sponsors and I think that that helped us really reach out to you know different parts of the community here on campus. Right, so what would you say your biggest challenge is? My biggest challenge is just trying to constantly stay on top of the trends and the direction that you know students minds are heading because so much goes on on a campus in one year that you know the, 
the more involved and immersed in that culture I can be, the better for my business. And um, that's an ongoing challenge just because, you know, there's just so many opportunities to be a part of if you're if you're forward thinking. But if you're not, they're gone before you even realize it. So um, that's a that's an ongoing challenge for sure. What do you think the most important aspect is about starting and running your own business? I think it's important to be able to keep yourself busy. You know, because no one makes my schedule for me. And most of the time I go into the week with very few things actually cemented on my calendar that I know like 100% for certain are gonna be going on. So um, it's just constantly filling that that in between time with things that are going to be positive and productive for the business. So um, I try to constantly keep myself out of my apartment, off the couch, out there, you know, out there mingling with people, uh, raising brand awareness, and really just talking about Hungry Boiler. Because each each and every person I speak to about this could potentially go and tell, you know, how many friends, how many people could they spread that onto in their network. So it's it's good to approach every single conversation as though it's you know it's a it's a big and it's an important. So how did the idea of Hungry Boiler come to you? Uh, okay, so I was I was with a buddy of mine and he started telling me about a similar website that had been started at Penn State and basically it was just a menu guide. It only listed every menu for every restaurant in State College. Uh, they didn't have any online ordering, they didn't have a call center. There are a lot of moving pieces that make Hungry Boiler work that you have to ensure are going to work 100% of the time because if at any point in that system fails, then somebody's left at home hungry, you know, waiting on their food. And that is a really good way. Yeah, that's awful. You know, that's worst case scenario, really. Um, nobody wants to be put in that position. I've been in that position before and, you know, you, you start cursing the restaurant, you curse the website that you ordered from. So uh, to, be, to be able to enable that feature, there were a lot of things that we had to make sure were just rock solid. Well, uh, those guys from Penn State formed a technology company called Local Up Solutions and basically they provided my buddy uh, a white label solution to start B-Town Menus. Uh, at the time I was helping him pass out postcards and going out and, you know, just really from the marketing standpoint, just going out and raising awareness. Um, from there, I grew up in West Lafayette, so I'm from here, and my partner was a Purdue student at the time, so I'd been back and forth, and I kept him abreast of the entire situation, telling him about the details and telling him how much information I was learning about their business model and reasons why I thought it would be viable, and uh, you know, he adhered to the idea instantly, thought it was wonderful. It was about 2008, I think Papa John's had reported that they were doing almost a 50% increase in business through their own online ordering. Domino's had hopped into the ballgame as well. There were a lot of huge corporations that were uh, seemingly investing a lot of their future success in the online ordering. So we took that as an excellent market indicator to uh, really create a solution that could go in and and develop a portal for all those restaurants at once, similar to something like Expedia.com. So when you go to Expedia, uh, you see in real time all of your available hotel options. Well, certainly you could go book on Hilton.com and get your reservation, but there's no competition involved there. You go to Hilton.com, you're paying their price, and that's no questions asked. But if you go to Expedia, you can see discounted rates, you can see the competition compared side by side. So that was something that we wanted to make sure we leveraged on Hungry Boiler. Right, very cool. Do you think you will possibly expand your business? Yeah, well Hungry Boiler is very specific to West Lafayette and, and no, that brand will not be expanded. It will uh, only be grown vertically here in West Lafayette. Now, um, we are hopeful that we're able to take the technology to other campuses across the country. Okay, so what advice would you give to future aspiring the entrepreneurs? I would just say to make sure you do your due diligence. It's really important that um, anytime you go into an industry or start a business that you're going into something that's connected to much other things typically. Unless, unless you're able to develop a business that's just totally unreliant on any other factors, um, then it's important for you to know a broad amount of information as well as a specific amount of information so that you can obviously keep yourself as prepared as possible. And, a lot, of people, a lot of times people go into things and I think that there may be um, too, their hopes are too high or they, they want to reach certain numbers so that the, book, so that the business can be feasible. Um, there's strengths and pressure that's put on uh, the entrepreneur to make sure that it happens. And I think that sometimes that can cause people to make unreasonable expectations on themselves and ultimately be the fault of their business. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you.